group. So uh, this session is mostly about accessibility and uh, I didn't have good sleep last night and I've been speaking a lot of French lately so if I speak like incoherently please excuse me. Uh, so uh, here's the title, Accessibility is Responsibility. Uh, it says with Jigarmeta and Maisie Masalto, that's my com uh, like uh, colleague, but she's not here, she's in Montreal, so I didn't remove her name because we have done this presentation multiple times together. So let's start. Uh, here's a link to the slides in case you want to refer to them like later. Uh, you can take a picture of this. I'll also show this slide towards the end of the presentation, so if you're not like uh, planning to take a picture right now, you can take it later towards the end of the presentation as well. Great, so I'll give you a second for the picture. Okay, uh, let's move forward. Time is 11.18 a.m. And uh, I'm representing Evolving Web. Um, we are a small Drupal shop, uh, not very small these days, we are growing, uh, located in Montreal. Uh, we are a team of like uh, around 15 Drupalers. We specialize in Drupal, we mostly do Drupal projects. And uh, we also do Drupal training, like Suzanne, uh, my boss, is there in the counter, Evolving Web. We are doing a lucky draw for offering uh, one free training session to somebody. So if you leave your visiting card or sign our paper there, uh, leave your name and email, you might win the training session. So uh, we contribute a lot to the Drupal community, like we sponsor a lot of Drupal events and uh, we submit a lot of uh, patches and modules and we do training, etc. So that's evolving web. Now here, here are some upcoming trainings, like I mentioned. So uh, feel free to go to that counter. Now, uh, these are some of our clients. I won't uh, name them because this presentation is quite long and I need to hurry up. So this is me. Um, I've been doing full stack uh, development since 2008. And uh, I started doing Drupal in 2013. I was doing like PrestaShop and CodeIgniter and then I suddenly found Drupal. And um, I really liked it, so I stuck to it. And uh, stuck to it, or stuck with it, I don't know. Um, then I've been learning Python Ruby lately. I have a marketing degree in like Bachelor of Business Administration, but nobody cares. And uh, I ran a web shop in Calcutta, India for three years. I speak around six languages, I'm learning two more. And I can solve the Rubik's Cube. So if you want to, communicate with me or get in touch, just look for Jigarius Caesar on Google and you'll find me. And this is my companion who's not here, but yep. Now, uh, accessibility, a quick introduction. What is accessibility? So, uh, web accessibility refers to the practice of making websites usable for people of all abilities and disabilities. So, what that means is like, a, your website should be usable by mostly anybody like who visits it. Like for example, I don't have good vision, I should still be able to use your site to a certain extent. Then um, I, your site is in maybe like uh, English and French, so the language should be in such a way that uh, even if I am like a young, like grade 10 student, grade 8 student, I should still be able to extract some information from your site. Like, I cannot um, control my mouse properly, then I still should be able to use your site to a great extent and uh, have some information. Because everybody has right to information, and that's what this is all about. So, why accessibility? Like, um, this is basically theoretical, so I'll just zoom through it. And um, it's like a corporate social responsibility. You're doing something good for the society so that more people can have uh, access to your content. And you're making the world a better place by implementing accessibility, by not excluding people who are disabled or people who don't have the same abilities that everybody have, has. Uh, then it could add to your company's reputation 
like a, you, if you like a, want your site to be famous and be used by many people, you can add like a accessibility to your site. Besides, it's becoming a legal requirement in many places. Like uh, I'm from Montreal, and in the province of Quebec, all the government websites are supposed to be in uh, like a quite accessible. So we are working on a government website right now, and we are doing a lot of accessibility stuff. So it's a legal requirement, and uh, sites might be fined for sometimes, like if uh, depending on the case. Uh, then it ensures better usability for all audiences, like I said, and it complements SEO. So, so since if you are doing a bunch of stuff for SEO, it might be worth it, like uh, going the extra mile and doing some accessibility as well. And uh, yeah, I think Google gives you points to an extent for having an accessible website. So uh, who needs accessibility? Firstly, uh, is the people with uh, disabilities. So visual disabilities, auditory disabilities, uh, motor disabilities, and cognitive and intellectual disabilities like people with dyslexia, etc. And uh, apart from like, not only people with disabilities need uh, accessibility, but people who are without disabilities might also be needing accessibility sometimes. For example, people who are old, like above 60 years old, etc., might have a problem with their vision. They might not be able to read low contrast uh, text, etc. And uh, then people who are not very well educated might not be able to understand if you suddenly start using Shakespearean English on your site. So, like, uh, keep your language simple as well. We'll get to all that. Then people who are new to the language, for example, I was learning French last year, so if the site content, if I found some site's content to be like relevantly easy to understand, like not very hi-fi grammar and very long sentences, I could understand because I was new to the language and it was easier for me, so I could still extract information. And then people with slow connections or old browsers and new and infrequent users, like if your site is doing something really special with the navigation, which is not very common, then a new user might like uh, find it completely alien territory. When, when he lands on your site, he would think, okay, how do I use this navigation? It looks so new. So if it's traditional to an extent, people can understand. And mobile phone users, uh, that's self-explanatory. So uh, principles of web accessibility, like, um, if you want to not spend much time learning about accessibility and still want to know accessibility, then the, this is like your rule. Uh, you could think of it as the French word pour, P-O-U-R, and uh, this is uh, what we'll be learning in the next set of slides. So, perceivable. Content cannot be invisible to all of the visitors' uh, senses. For example, if they cannot see properly, or if they cannot see at all, they should be able to make something, extract information by listening to your content. So, using screen readers, for example, and uh, so on. Then, operable. You cannot ask the user to interact with the site in a manner that they cannot interact uh, with the site in. For example, if a person cannot operate the mouse because they have some kind of a problem, then they should be able to use the keyboard. And if they're not able to use the keyboard, then whatever assistive technology that they're using, they should be able to use it to navigate through your site and extract information. Uh, then understandable. So the content or operation cannot be beyond their understanding. For example, if you're making a website about grade five physics, you cannot suddenly start talking about string theory and hadron collider, etc. So because it won't make enough sense to them. So try to keep your content simple according to your target audience, and the content should be understandable. And uh, robust. So the technology, like uh, your site should be built in such a way that uh, all the current like technologies of the present day should be able to use it to make the site accessible to a wide variety of audiences. And it should follow all the like uh, accessibility rules, etc., and should be built in such a way that uh, it won't become outdated sometime really soon. So if it's, it should be like uh, nice and robust, so it continues working. And so 
how do we approach implementation of accessibility? Uh, this is again a little bit more of theory. Uh, so first, we need to plan. Like uh, you cannot like uh, suddenly decide that okay, this was a website was supposed to be accessible. What am I going to do now? I have only two days left for delivery. You cannot be like that. Like uh, you have to plan from be from beforehand. Like you need to plan for your resource allocation and budget. You also need to tell the client like if you need accessibility on your site, then you will need more resources and we'll need more time to develop your site uh, because it's clearly not like included in the base package or whatever. And implementation. So for implementation, you need to uh, like make the entire team be aware of your objectives that you want to have an accessible website. So you should start with your design team and let them know that we need an accessible website so design accordingly. Then you should tell your dev team that we want an accessible website so please make all accessible solutions on this side. And uh, the content team should also be aware of this because uh, you might deliver a website completely accessible but then the content team messes things up and in a month it's no longer accessible. So you might need uh, to train the content team so that they don't break your site. And evaluation. So like anything, you just uh, do something and then you evaluate and then you iterate to see like where you went wrong and fix the errors. So that's also very important. Uh, now, if you decide to go for accessibility, and if you have done anything related to accessibility, you might be aware of these three like sets of A's. So let's see what the level A, level AA, and AAA are about. So level A is the minimal level of accessibility that a website would have. And without it, uh, people will find it impossible to use the site. Uh, people with some people will find it impossible to use the site. Level AA is generally what uh, most set of like uh, websites go for because um, it's like a nice point of balance between A and AAA. So without level AA uh, of accessibility, it will be difficult for some people to use your site. And you could like uh, be safe if you go for uh, AA accessibility for your site. And AAA, on the other hand, is like uh, uh, your site becoming extremely accessible. Like it's very, very, very accessible. And you have to compromise a lot on various aspects of the design, etc., uh, to a great extent. And this level of accessibility is usually used for websites which. Uh, know that they'll be like a visit, be having a lot of audiences, uh, a lot of audience from uh, people with disabilities, etc. So um, that's something to note. So the point to take home is level AA is a good point between A and AAA to go for. Now implementation. The time is 11:30 a.m. We are on time. And uh, designer's responsibility in accessibility implementation is very important because uh, any project usually, like uh, web, web projects, usually start with the designer making some things and then the development team like uh, translate, uh, translates that design into an actual website. So uh, as a designer you must keep an eye on the font because if the font is really small then people might have a hard time reading it. And it might like uh, be painful to the eyes, painful. So uh, that's something to keep note. Like usually, I follow the rule of 14 px uh, fonts. So if I never use a font which is less than 14 px, and uh, then use web-friendly fonts. So for example, uh, don't use squiggly handwriting fonts which are very hard to read or something really, really artistic like font that is in English but looks like Chinese or Hindi. So don't do that, which is uh, very hard for some people to read. And avoid too many font variations. Like if you have a bunch of font variations, like uh, if it's anything above uh, a couple of font families, it's like you're overdoing it with like, font variations in my opinion. So try to keep it simple. It will keep your uh, website healthy and accessible. So the next point, is about uh, contrast. So the higher the contrast, the better. 
and uh, there are a bunch of tools available these days where you can put a couple of colors and they'll tell you whether the color combination is accessible. So what contrast is for is like uh, people who don't have like a normal vision, they, they might not be able to read fonts like uh, if you have a white background with a light gray text, it might be very hard. Like I was at one more presentation in the ground floor uh, or the first floor, whatever you call it, Red Chaussée. I was uh, there and the lights were on, so the, present, the, pre the font was not very clear because of the ambient light. So it was not very accessible for me. So uh, here we see the colors of the Quebec flag, which is like a 13.25 contrast ratio, which is more than what you need for the triple A level. So keep an eye on the color combinations. Don't go for something with low contrast with, because it will be hard to read for some people. And next is keyboard navigability. So if somebody is not using a mouse, they should be able to easily use like a keyboard technology to like tap through your links and click around and use the site. So I've been using VoiceOver lately. It's uh, like a screen reader, so, which comes with the Mac OS. So I just turn it on and it starts speaking like uh, everything that you tap through. So for example, I'm tapping through the navigation, it says link, home, link, about us. And it will say things like that and then you can press enter to use it. So uh, give it a try and you'll know what uh, keyboard navigability means. And uh, so make sure key your site is keyboard navigable. And uh, the next one is like proper flow of content. Like just like we do when we are writing something down on a piece of paper, uh, think about how you are going to organize the elements on your pa uh, web page. For example, if you are talking about uh, the geography of Canada, you you have an H1 saying geography of Canada. Then you have well, a small description. Then you will have H2 elements talking about the names of like uh, stating the names of provinces. Then you give a description about each province and so on. So you structure your content nicely which helps people with screen readers um, and it gives like more meaning to your document. And then keep in mind that the design will ultimately be implemented in HTML and CSS. The designer needs to know this because sometimes young designers do like so much uh, frills and decorations in their design which cannot be implemented with HTML and CSS in the end of the, at the end of the day, sorry. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind, like HTML, CSS is what you're going to be using for building your website ultimately. And also keep in mind that someone might be listening to what you're writing, because they might be using a screen reader. So um, make sure your content is screen reader friendly and design as well. Uh, next is like a bunch of uh, quick points. So the first one I already mentioned. The second one is indicate, indicate element states properly. Like for example, if you have a button on your site, then uh, you might want to design all the various states that the button could be in. For example, hover will look like this. When the button is tapped upon and focused, it will look like this. Uh, when somebody has already visited the link, it will look like this, etc. So with that, like people will have a clear picture of what they're exactly doing on the site. If you're tabbing through the site and you're tabbed upon a particular link, you'll be able to see, okay, this link is green and is underlined. It means I'm on that link. And if I press enter, then I'll be using that link. So that's very important. Then maybe include a text version of your site. Like for example, the CRA website has text version of all their like tax laws, etc. So, um, you might even go for a text version if you're expecting too many people uh, with accessibility requirements to visit your site. Then again, like you can have a high contrast version. Uh, I usually use these high contrast versions at night because uh, it reduces screen glare, but it's for people who cannot read low contrast uh, things. Like uh, if anyone has read Docker documentation, You'll see there. There's a like a. It's a technology called Docker. For those of you who don't know Docker, they have a small button on the side saying like you can click it, and the background becomes dark and the foreground becomes white, so it becomes easier on your eyes and you can read it easily. So 
that's the high contrast version. Most of the operating systems also have a high contrast version. So that's something to keep in mind. And include a printable version if you're expecting many people to print the pages of your site, if required. That's why I say if required. Um, and have consistency across pages. This is very important. Like uh, there are many young ambitious designers who make so many changes between two pages of their site that they seem to be like a, as if you're on two different sites when you're on the home page and when you're inside. So if there's consistency across the pages, then it helps new visitors and people who are not very used to web technology or it's just easy. Like if you're writing all your, if you're putting the logo on the top left and people expect it there and they always expect the logo to be clickable so that you can go to the home page. So those things are like minor things you can do to make life easy for your visitors. Yeah, and remember, simplicity is beautiful, so follow the KISS principle and be accessible. So next is development. This is where I'll be doing most of my talking. So what's the developer's responsibility in implementing accessibility? So uh, since we're talking about Drupal here, um, Drupal 8 has taken the initiative of making um, accessibility like a very important, like they are focusing on accessibility, which is a very good thing. And there are themes like Bootstrap who have, uh, with, who, which offer like even more accessibility than comes out of the box with Drupal. So uh, let's see how you can add to all that accessibility. So first, make sure you're writing valid markup, because if your markup is wrong, then uh, various browsers or screen readers might not be able to uh, extract the same meaning that you're trying to convey through your web page. For example, if you have a heading, then make sure it's a heading tag, like h1, h2, h3, and so on. Don't just put in a paragraph or a div and make it bold and, uh, oops, uh, bold and big to make it look like a heading because it will not make uh, any semantic sense. So uh, the next thing to keep an eye on is the code to text ratio. So don't write like uh, a bunch of code for something which you can do with one line of code. Make sure you're doing things optimally so it helps in accessibility as well. Now, uh, choose your HTML elements logically, like I mentioned, like if you're making a list, like um, there are many people, for example, an everyday example will be when people write Gmail, uh, an email on Gmail, uh, they tend to make bullet lists by putting asterisks or dashes in front of the lines. So uh, it's not very accessible. Like if somebody was to read that email using a screen reader, they won't see it as a list. They, maybe they'll listen to something like dash, point one, dash, point two. So I've never tried that, but I think that's what the screen reader will do. So if you have a list, then it will say list, two items, item one, item two. So that, that makes more sense when you're using a screen reader. So use the elements wisely. And uh, like, for example, if you have a button, then use a button element. Don't use a link and make it a button using JavaScript, etc. The next one is the ARIA role. Like, uh, I learned a lot of things about accessibility after making this presentation. So this is not only ARIA role that I'm talking about. I mean all the ARIA attributes. So ARIA, area, however you want to call it. Uh, area attributes, uh, there's one thing I've heard about them is like, it's best if you don't use them. If you don't have to use them, you are doing just fine with your accessibility. And in, at times, when you do need to use those attributes, use them wisely and uh, learn about them so that like, uh, you can use them. Like for example, area role uh, is for, uh, for example, if you have a link which is acting like a button, then you put an attribute saying area role equals button. If you have a div which is acting like a section, you say area role equals section. So there are like a bunch of area attributes you can go through. And the next one is avoid absolute positioning unless absolutely necessary because it uh, messes up the flow of content and does bad things. I'm against it. But uh, if you do have to use it, use it wisely. And lastly is a general point like use efficient solutions 
don't just use something because like uh, it's quick, etc. If you're focusing on accessibility, make sure what you're doing is right, etc. And uh, yeah, keep an eye on those. Like, don't take shortcuts which are going to mess up your accessibility. The next one again is like uh, HTML elements. Choosing your elements wisely. So, like I said, uh, use OL and UL for ordered and unordered lists. Then ensure proper ordering of the headings to add more meaning to your content and structure to your content. And uh, choose these like new HTML5 elements very wisely and use them because they really add meaning to your content. Like for example, you have a section element which uh, helps you define a particular section in your uh, document. Uh, you have this article element which tells that this is a standalone piece of content uh, on your site. Then you have a nav element for navigation, header and footer, the main, which means like this is the main content for this page. The rest of it uh, is like navigation and other content, but this is the main thing that you want to uh, look at. Aside is like complementary content and so on. I haven't mentioned all of the new HTML5 elements here but you can read about them. Uh, the next is like use diff for design elements. Uh, like don't use section for everything unless you actually mean a section. Div is for like creating various like themable elements on your site and just do some grouping and display block if you know what I mean. And uh, avoid using deprecated HTML elements that nobody uses because it's 2000s and not 90s, the 90s. Like for example, don't use the font uh, element, I've seen it. Like uh, if you create uh, a posting on eBay, I think they still have font elements in there in the formatting. So don't do that, like uh, don't use B, I, use strong, E, M, etc. And keep best practices in mind. Like um, for example, if you're implementing a drop-down menu, then read something about accessibility uh, of drop-down menus. Like there is, at, there are attributes like area has pop up, area expanded, etc. So before you implement a solution, know that you're doing the right thing. Otherwise, it will mess up your accessibility. Then uh, navigation. Like I mentioned, like uh, if you're doing drop-down navigation or any other kind of like, uh, for example, mobile menus then keep an eye on uh, what you're doing because the chances are you might mess up the accessibility if you don't do it right. Uh, the first point is very important, like uh, when you're using a screen reader, you usually have to tap through things. So uh, in, Drupal, in Drupal, we have a link at the top of the page uh, which says like uh, jump to main content or skip to main content. How many of you have seen that? Have you seen it? Yeah, so if you can tap to it and press enter, you should be taken to the main content of the page. And then you can tap through, tap through the rest of the main content of the page. So keep, make sure you have that link, like don't remove it. Otherwise, uh, people using screen readers will have to tap through all the navigation links and header elements to get to the main content. And they'll just leave your site or maybe they'll punch a hole into their laptop. And uh, Keep the navigation simple, like don't do three level or four level navigations like we used to have in the 90s, like drop down, inside drop down, don't do that. Two levels at the max. If you need three levels, you should be like thinking more about the first rule that I just mentioned. And have meaningful link text, like don't make uh, links read like a uh, read more. So for example, if you're using a screen reader and you tap through the, that link, you'll listen to something like a, a link, read more. It doesn't make any sense. But if you have some meaningful text in there, like for example, um, read more about us, read more about our trainings, etc., And you don't necessarily need to make all that text visible. You can use CSS to like uh, put a span inside the anchor tag and have a class name, like a, the, the visually hidden class that comes with Drupal 8, you can add that to the span. And the span will be hidden for screens, like people looking at your site won't see that text. But if you're using a screen reader, it will read like a link, read more about us. So that will make more sense for a screen reader user. Now, next is sections. 
make sure you keep things organized. Try to put all your content into some meaningful section if possible. And use uh, precise tags, like don't use section everywhere. There are like specialized sections called uh, headers, footers, article, etc. So read about them and use them properly. And uh, define section labels, like if you're having, if you have multiple sections on your site, or say multiple navigations, then you need to add labels to each of those sections. So a person using a screen reader will be jumping from section to section and they'll be able to listen to the name of the section. Like uh, you are on the main content section, you are on the main navigation, etc. And it is, it is also possible using certain technologies to see a list of all the sections on the site, uh, on the page that you're looking at, and then jumping to a particular section. So if there's no name, how will they figure out what they want to listen to? So make sure you have section labels. You can do it using the area label or area label by attributes. And uh, in Drupal 8, like uh, this is very, very relevant if you have a bunch of blocks on your site. So each block uh, should like uh, be a section. If you're using the Bootstrap theme, you will get the sections but I don't think you'll get the area label and label by stuff, so you might have to write some code. And uh, then define section labels, like I mentioned, all content should belong to some sections. Yep. So images and figures, like um, all text websites are quite boring, so we usually add images to our content. So make sure you do it the right way if you're doing an accessible site, for example, Include um, alt attributes for your images, and if the image adds some meaning to the content, then make sure you populate the alt attribute. So if the image is merely there for decorative purposes, then you can add an alt attribute and make like a open and close quotes with no text inside, and screen readers, according to the user's preferences, will not say anything about the images. But uh, if you don't write that alt attribute and keep it empty for those decorative images, then every time you tap through those images, uh, a screen reader would say like an uh, image. Like it would say image, image, image every time you tap through it. So make sure you don't do that because it's very annoying when you're using a screen reader. And don't add any alt text for decorative elements like if, for example, if you're using rounded corners, uh, the old school way, which means the non-CSS way, and you're using images for the corner, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, etc. Then uh, make sure you don't have any alt, otherwise uh, if you're using a screen reader, you'll listen to something like, uh, for example, um, about us, rounded corner, top left, which is not very meaningful. So make sure you keep that alt empty for decorative images unless they add special meaning to the content, just leave it empty. And don't use all the attributes for keyword stuffing. Like I have, uh, in 2015, I made a blog site, like blog for one of my friends, not my friends actually, his wife. And uh, she does a beauty blog. So uh, she wanted like more SEO and uh, stuff like that. So she learned from somewhere that she can put all sorts of keywords in the alt attributes. So uh, even if it doesn't make sense, she will just write the same set of repetitive words in the all the attributes. So please don't do that because it is uh, not very helpful. Uh, all the attribute is not there for keyword stuffing. It's mainly for accessibility. And uh, ensure caption for figure elements. Like in HTML5, you have a figure element. So if you're using it, uh, then make sure you have captions to go with them. Uh, if you're using the Drupal 8 Visivig editor and you insert an image or some entities as well, you end up having a figure uh, element in your markup. But unfortunately, that figure element um, is not very accessible at the moment, if I remember correctly, because it doesn't have a caption related to it. So um, it needs an area label by or something. So I have mentioned it somewhere on Drupal.org. I created an issue, I don't remember. So make sure if you're using the figure attribute on purpose, you have a caption wherever possible. 
And uh, next is audio and video. Uh, usually if you're using like embedded audio and video, like iframes, etc., then uh, you should have a title for those like iframes so that it makes more sense. And uh, if you're embedding audio and video using um, the HTML5 audio or video elements, then make sure you add a transcript or maybe uh, captions so that people who cannot like uh, listen to the audio should be like could like read the text and understand what's going on. And uh, whenever you upload a video on YouTube, like if possible, if it's uh, if you want it to be accessible, add a transcript so that people uh, can understand your video. Like uh, the auto-generated auto captions are uh, good to an extent for some videos, but uh, in the accessibility community, they are usually called uh, corruptions because they don't make sense at times. So uh, if you add your own, then it will make much more sense. And uh, if somebody is new to a language, like for example, I was learning French last year, so if a video would have captions, I would be like uh, very excited to watch that video because I could listen at the same time and see the words and improve my French. So it helps. And uh, whenever possible, like use uh, specialized third-party services because, uh, for example, YouTube is a million billion dollar company. I don't know what million or billion, but they have spent a bunch of hours doing research work about accessibility, which you will never be able to do. So uh, if you use their technology, then you will get all that accessibility stuff out of the box and your client will be happy. So uh, more than the clients, the visitors will be happy. Uh, and tabular data. So more often than not, we use tables to like include a bunch of data on pages. So when you're using tables, make sure you add a caption and make sure your captions are at the top of the table uh, so that uh, when you tap to that table, you listen to the caption first and then you can decide whether you want to read like the entire table or not. So uh, if you go to a big table saying annual report for the year 2017-18, I would figure out whether I want to listen to that information or, or I just uh, want to skip. So otherwise I'll have to scan through the table and figure out for myself what's going on, which is not very good. And don't use tables for structuring pages because it's no longer the 90s. So use divs, etc. I don't think anyone does that, but I just mentioned it just in case you're like not planning to change or something. So use divs. No, don't use tables. Then use floating row and column headers for big tables wherever possible. So for example, if you have the annual report that I just mentioned and it has a bunch of like rows and you go beyond one fold of your browser, then if the header is floating at the top, you, sh you will be able to see like, uh, okay, this column is this, and so on. So it helps a lot. Now, uh, next one is JavaScript. So JavaScript, can I rely on you? And the answer is like, you can rely to an extent, but not for everything. So it doesn't hurt to have graceful degradation uh, in your web page. So for example, if you're doing a mobile menu, then you might be having a button saying menu and when you click on it uh, a menu will pop up from somewhere so uh, without javascript what you could do is like just hide the menu the button and keep the menu in the dom like visible so that screen readers can jump to it and add a heading to it like for example main navigation so if somebody's scanning all the headings on the page then they'll be able to understand, okay, the main navigation is there. Even though I don't have JavaScript, I know that the main navigation is there and I can tap through it and do my stuff. So um, speaking of menus, I uh, was building, I am still like building, uh, I have created a module called CIDR, S-I-D-R, which uh, does something like this, like uh, mobile menus. So what it does is like it creates a button, you can click on it, a slide out like pops out of your uh, browser and then you have uh, not only menus but other blocks like logos and other stuff. 
So if you are doing accessible menus, that uh, you might want to check that out because I spent a lot of hours to optimize accessibility and I'm still, still spending more time on it. So, uh, speaking of which, use accessible plugins. If you have to use, uh, like for example, a JavaScript library, then read about how it works, like implement it in a dev environment and see if it still make, keeps your site accessible or if it breaks everything. For example, there's this uh, module in Drupal 8 called uh, a contrib module called Chosen. It makes your select uh, like drop down. What do you call them? Drop down menus. Drop down select elements. They make them like a, such that you can type and you get autocomplete, etc. But uh, unfortunately, the last I saw, it like breaks the link between the select element and its label. So when you tap to that particular like select uh, the chosen element, you don't get any hint as to what uh, form element you are populating. For example, if you tap to it like uh, an input, you listen to something like uh, input element, first name, and then you have something else. But if you tap to that chosen thing, you don't listen to anything because it breaks the link between the select element and the label. So just do some research. Probably they fixed it by now, but I'm just giving an example, so nothing against the chosen guys. And uh, avoid trapping the user into workflows. For example, uh, uh, when I was new to Canada last year, I was looking for some furniture, and accidentally I, like, I was doing some Google search and I landed on a very cool site because they had nice, fancy furniture. Uh, but as soon as I landed on the site, they showed me the site for a moment and then the JavaScript started working and they showed me an overlay with like a newsletter subscription dialog and to my surprise it had like a no close button or no way to like escape it. You have to enter your email address and uh, name just to see their site. So what I did was um, I cheated, I used the Chrome uh, inspect element thing and I deleted those two divs and I went to the contact section of their site and I said, your site is doing this, which is not very good. I don't know if they fixed it, but uh, yeah, I got like, I didn't like the site, so I just moved on. And uh, uh, lastly, like write browser agnostic syntax. So um, don't write something which will only work on Chrome and not work on Safari and uh, Edge. Like, they are not as popular, but you need to respect them because they're still alive. So I wish there were only one browser in this world, but we wish for many things. So uh, next is metadata, the power of the invisible. Though you cannot see what's going on behind the scenes with metadata, but uh, you need to like uh, add proper metadata to your documents so that screen readers mostly can do the right thing with your document and things like search engines etc will pick up the site's language and other things properly so for example if you have your content in Fre uh, let's not say french let's say spanish so if your content is in spanish and uh, you're writing something like no hablo espanol or yo hablo espanol but you don't say that the content is actually in spanish then the screen reader might not understand, depending on the screen reader, it might not understand that it's actually in Spanish, so it will pronounce it the English way, which is very funny, it will say, no hablo espanol. I don't know what it will pronounce, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, imagine if uh, you listen to one line like this, it's so annoying to your ears, and if you have to read an entire page of uh, French or Spanish or any other language being read in English, it will be a nightmare. People will just skip the site and go back, like look for some other site. So make sure you have those things. And there are other like tiny attributes like hreflang and uh, like um, left to right and right to left text attributes, etc., which we barely use. But if you're doing something on similar lines, just make sure you do your research and use those attributes. Then. Uh, Oh, we finished the developer section. That's great. And time is 12.01 p.m. So uh, we are on time. Implementation of content. So like I said, 
you can do a bunch of accessibility stuff and lose your sleep making an accessible website, but the content editor can break your accessibility in a week or maybe less. So unless you train them. So let's see some do's and don'ts for content editors. And there might be more, like this list is just inclusive, not exhaustive. So first is uh, you could have a accessibility help page like I always give the example of BBC. They have um, a page where they say like we have done our best to implement accessibility. If you have like a, uh, if you cannot read low contrast text then use this and this to improve accessibility there. If you think the font size is small, do this, that, so and so on. So uh, you just tell the user how they can improve their experience on the site. And uh, Next is like know your Visivic editor because content editors mostly like don't write HTML directly. They just use Visivic editor. In case of Drupal, it will be CK editor or yeah, CK editor. FCK editor was the old name. Okay. So, okay. Anyway, so CK editor. Uh, if you're using it, then make sure you know all the buttons that are uh, available to you. For example, the list thing that I mentioned a while back, if you're making a bullet list, you could just make a bullet list, actual bullet list, by clicking the right button. If you're adding a heading, then choose the heading one or heading two, etc. properly. And uh, so on. Like you're adding an image, then there's an option to add alt text and like the list goes on. Then include a sitemap page so that people know exactly what's going on on your site. And they'll be able to have a good picture, a clear picture of uh, how you have structured your content and uh, where they can find something that they're looking for. I usually use sitemap pages for uh, just doing a command F or control F and then searching for the keywords. So for example, uh, you just go to the sitemap and then you're looking for billing information or something, you just do command F, you look for billing and you find the relevant link and then you can click on it. So it's very easy. Then uh, next is keep your content easy, like uh, don't start using Shakespeare in English or like, a, I don't know, your own style of creative English, which is very hard to understand for people. Aim for ninth grade reading skills. So that way everybody will understand what you're trying to convey. Uh, besides, if they don't understand, then the entire like objective of having a web page fails. So make sure you're clear. Like um, in Chinese, for example, they keep their sentences really short and simple. So if you try to do like Chinese people do, like keep them short and simple, break them into smaller sentences instead of going long and long, like uh, making them extremely long. Then uh, ensure proper punctuation because, uh, like I said, someone might be listening to what you write using a screen reader. So if you don't add proper punctuation, then the screen reader will just read the entire piece of text as like one long sentence, which won't make much sense for people. So add commas, add periods, etc., so that the screen reader can uh, do its thing. You can use some uh, text-to-speech engine to simulate uh, or use a voice uh, like a screen reader to listen to what you've written, uh, which will help. Then look out for spelling errors because uh, not everybody knows the language very well. Like for example, I mentioned my case with French. So I would, I'm still not in a position to understand French typos. So if you do something weird, I might get confused. And French, for example, has, is very well known and famous for dual meaning. Like if you change one letter, it might mean something completely different. Uh, yeah, so someone might be listening to the content. Okay, I said it already, but this example is really nice, so I'll mention it. So uh, for example, if you are writing this thing, which reads like projet énorme, it sounds like uh, enormous projects instead of sounding like projects uh, and norms. So uh, if you flip the word order, uh, on the other hand, you say norm et projet, it sounds like norms and projects, which is like more clear. So sometimes like subtle differences, uh, like small changes like this one also make a big difference. Uh, 
uh, then avoid acronyms or like explain them so that people know exactly what you're talking about and uh, you can use the ABBR element in HTML to do that and uh, then ensure meaningful and unique link text like I said if you have a bunch of uh, uh, links saying read more and if somebody is trying to use the list of links option like a, there is an option you, on some tools to see a list of all the links that exist on your page so that the person can choose the right link and go to it so if you have all of them saying read more then it doesn't make much sense like everything is read more which one do I click so uh, use some techniques like read more about us read more about my dog and so on and okay so evaluation testing test the output and iterate so uh, after you do all the hard work you need to pass it on to the QA team or you do the QA yourself and uh, figure out exactly where you went wrong and if everything that you meant to do has actually been done the way you wanted to do it try to use your site with uh, a keyboard and see if you can tap through uh, and use it properly then test alternate versions of your site like if you made a text only version or a high contrast version test them as well don't uh, ignore them uh, then test on mobile devices so that you know like whether your site is responsive and if everything works as expected um, test with screen reader like if you're using mac os you have a, what is it called voiceover uh, i could like i still don't know how to turn on voice voiceover on purpose so all i do is like i click on the siri button on the touch bar and tell tell her like uh, turn on voiceover and she says voiceover activated or something and it starts so try using voiceover or whatever tool you have available if you don't have any available tools and you don't know where to go what to go for then do some research or you can use this chrome extension called chrome Vox, which i used to use before having a mac uh, laptop then uh, outsource testing if you want like uh, there are companies which outsource their tech, uh, testing to actual people with uh, like uh, disabilities who are experienced with using sites, using screen readers, etc. So they know more. Uh, then you can use automated testing. Like there's a bunch of tools available out there which continuously monitor your site and tell you if it's still accessible. For example, we, uh, I have used this site improve tool that's mentioned in point one. So uh, what it does is it lets you enter the URL of your site and just like uh, Google Analytics or uh, Google Webmaster Tools, which is now called Search Console, if I remember correctly. Uh, it scans your site regularly and it tells you if something has changed during the last seven days or so. So, so uh, it will tell you if you have any broken links or duplicate link text or broken markup, etc. So it's a good tool to have. You can give it a try. And uh, next is screen readers. I mentioned this already. I use VoiceOver now. Earlier, I used to use Chromevox. And uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of the presentation. You can take a picture of this if you want to see the slides later. Uh, I'll wait for the ones taking a picture. And time is 12.10 PM. So we are on time. So, merci beaucoup. If you have questions, speak now or forever hold your peace. Pardon? Okay. I'll make it bigger, actually. So, this is inaccessibility. I need to make it accessible. Okay, so do you have any questions? Great, no questions. I'm so glad. So, yeah. So thank you very much for being here. And if you have any accessibility related questions, you can hit me up. I'll be around there near the Evolving Web booth where Suzanne is also there. And I hope you have a great day. Bonjour.